All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is PXJS Coding live stream. Uh, today, we're going to be doing uh, another proposal, actually, two of them this time around. So, we got two, I think, out of three top proposals right now. Uh, one of them is do React and Bulma IO uh, integration, which is a very, very simple one. So, I thought I would throw in something else, you know, to make it a bit more interesting. And uh, the second proposal we got is the React app internationalization and localization. So this time around, we're going to be talking about things like language detection, pluralization, localization, internationalization. And um, I, I can't really tell anything about CLDR and preparing files for translation companies, because this is something I've never done. And uh, CLDR is something I never worked with. But um, I can tell you about everything else because I did do other things. So this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, so because we're going to be building a thing with React and Bulma, I thought why not build an app that would allow us to translate um, basically a translate uh, translation editing app, right? So here's the general idea of it, we're going to build an app that would allow us to uh, specify a bunch of languages, specify a bunch of strings and allow us to write translations for them. This is basically it, right? So it's going to be very simple. But it's going to support uh, pluralization, localization, and so obviously, internationalization is what we're aiming for. And uh, yeah, then we can use like language detection, please never do language detection by IP address. This is the like bane of my existence. When I um, when I just moved to Germany, and my German was pretty much non existent, I Oh, boy, I spent so much time suffering because half of the websites started suddenly started giving me out the results in German because I was in Germany, you know, physically, even though my browser didn't even have the German in the language list, but I still get websites in German because yeah, apparently I have to be suffering. So yes, please use browser settings, please use language list. This is an existing thing. And this is way better indicator of what the person speaks than his IP address or the current geolocation even, you know. All right, uh, but yeah, let's just get started. So as usual, um, I'll be using uh, Next.js probably because I'm too lazy to set things up. So we're just gonna roll with that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna view the integrated terminal. And I hope that's big enough. Maybe let me just make it slightly bigger so that you can see everything. And um, let me start my Ubuntu console because this is the thing that I am using. Okay. Cool. So we can start by initializing it with the uh, default parameters because why the hell not? There we go. And um, yes, we got to start it with adding um, Next.js, right? So we're going to do npm install next react and react dom. So this is pretty straightforward. And meanwhile, I'm going to go to Next.js, uh, not examples is not what I want actually wants the documentation and we're just going to copy the uh, script first of all. Uh, yes, so we're going to wait for it to install before we actually change the package JSON ourselves. So we're going to copy the scripts and I'm going to copy the basic, um, I think it was about pages. Yeah, so I'm, I'm you know, even though I'm using um, even though I'm using I oh, know that's not a folder. I don't want a folder. I want a file. Um, even though I'm using um, Next.js on a daily basis, I still forget how to properly set the thing up. So uh, yes, I do will I will look into the docs more than once, I guess. Okay, there we go. Come on. Why is it taking so much? That's weird. But I had npm cache at least some of it. Did it get invalidated over time? I didn't use this computer for development. That's a bit okay. Whatever. You know what? Let's just let's just go with whatever blah, 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 with whatever we have. Right. So come on. It's the, the most entertaining part of being a software developer looking at the progress bars. There we go. All right, um, I'm going to do this. And uh, we are going to do npm run dev. This is what we want to do. 
And theoretically, once we go to the um, localhost 3000, okay, let's do that. Localhost uh, 3, what? What? No, that's not what I wanted to press. Come on. There you go. We should see our welcome to Next.js. There we go. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can guys can see what happens. Okay, cool. So we got that, right? Um, now we need to add Bulma. That is not what I wanted. I wanted this. Uh, okay, so how can you add Bulma to react? Well, that's the this is the cool thing about Bulma, right? So Bulma, if you are not familiar with it is a CSS framework. So it's quite nice. It looks very pretty. This the website for Bulma is of course built on Bulma and uh, it's open source. It's MIT license and everything you ever wanted from a CSS framework. It's modern, it uses Flexbox and everything and uh, it is quite nice to use. <clears throat> So one of the things about Bulma is that it's a pure CSS framework that doesn't have any JavaScript, right? So uh, if you go to advanced uh, components, like for example, model, you do have a model window, but there is no JavaScript to trigger it. So you have to write this yourself. So there's a, even a warning here that says, hey, Bulma does not include any JavaScript, so you have to implement it yourself. This is perfect for react. And this is one of the biggest pains that I had with bootstrap because you know, while bootstrap is a very nice framework framework, it's a, um, yeah, let me try that again. Well, bootstrap is a very nice framework as well. And they released like version four right now. And it's, you know, very nice. Bootstrap depends on its own JavaScript for some things. All right, there is like if you just use CSS, there is ways to work around what the JavaScript from Bootstrap does, but they are not very nice. And using Bootstrap with JavaScript essentially means you will have to drag in jQuery, you will have to drag in this popper thing. And it gets annoying, it gets messy and doesn't really work well unless you go and use like there's the React Bootstrap, um, was it just React? Yeah, the React Bootstrap package that basically does all of that for you. They are still on v3, for example, because it's a lot of work to make those two work together. And you know, it's just annoying, basically. So in Bulma's case, because you don't have any JavaScript, it's just basically perfect for um, uh, React. So uh, there are two ways of um, using it. Um, where is the getting started? Was it overview? Start? Yes, there you go. So Right, we have, as you can see here, there's three ways to use it. So first one NPM, second one uh, CDN GS, so any, any CDN basically. And third one, just download the file directly from the uh, repository. So we are gonna first use it from CDN because why not? I'll just show you how you can do that. In some cases, this is the fastest way and um, you know, most like sometimes it just works fine. Um, and then we're going to switch to using it using uh, npm and installing it from the repository actually properly, let's put it this way. Okay, so Next.js allows you to inject things into head using the head thing. Uh, so we're going to just take this copy it and say, hey, you know, here's my head and um, I am gonna do this, I'm gonna say h1 over here. And why do you close it right away? This is slightly annoying. Okay, and then we're gonna say heads. And in this we're gonna say style and I probably should just copy it from the CDN. So we can copy link tag. This is what we want. There you go. So we literally just insert the link into the head, right? Um, theoretically, we already should have Bulma included. To test this, we can, um, let me think, uh, there is this hero component. Yeah, we can just use that, right? So we can just take this. And instead of saying welcome to Next.js, we just say, hey, you know, that's the thing. So and we can probably put the head inside of this section just for the sake of it. There you go. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Save, right? So now theoretically, we should see this here. Yeah, there you go. So it works, right? So we have Bulma, we have our styling, it's all nice and everything. Um, the problem, well, there's two problems. First of all, we will have to include this into every page, which is well, not necessarily bad, but a bit annoying. This, of course, could be circumvented by using the um, underscore document template. So the Next.js provides this uh, template, essentially, that can modify the document 
uh, structure, right? So you will basically override the head here and say, okay, here's the style tag that links to the Bulma CSS, but it's, I get like, you know what, let's do this, right? So let's, let's just do, so we say, okay, document JS, and I'm just gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna paste it over here. And instead of using the uh, link in this head, so here we're just gonna have our page, just gonna be nice and clean. Uh, and here, instead of this style, we are gonna have the Bulma CSS, All right? And here I'm just gonna save, theory we should rebuild and we should still have our Bulma style. I don't think it has Bulma style, probably because it did not pick up. Uh, oh yeah, and there's also the class thing, which should be class, what? Last name, right? There we go. Okay. And if we restart it, it should pick up the document template. And uh, in a second, we should actually, there you go. So this looks like it is uh, templated with Bulma. So let's just check. Yep, the styles, as you can see, are coming from Bulma. Let me just increase the size maybe here. Um, make it a bit bigger. Yeah. So they are coming from Bulma min CSS. So we, are, we have Bulma working, right? So it's nice and all, but then again, you know, this is uh, CDN and there are more than one story when the adding files from CDN actually can decrease your performance rather than increase. So what we are gonna do now is we're gonna actually use the NPM version. So where was the uh, home and in our view documentation overview start. So we're gonna use this, right? And install it locally and then use it from the local bit npm install Bulma from the local um, thing. So in this case, I remember they had this problem. Um, what? Next year seven was, ah, maybe that's why I didn't hit the cache. That is a solid point actually. Uh, let me see, where's the release notes? Release, oh, you are right, okay. That is neat, Webpack 4. I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, all those messages did not look the same as as, as in this morning, basically. <laughs> I was like, okay, that is interesting. Right, okay, but let's let's go back to the writing the app. So Bulma, um, what we need to do is we need to import the CSS right now and this is what we want. So we want the plugin for that. I mean, you can do this manually, but it's annoying. So I'm just gonna use the Next.js plugin, which is just handy and install this. And in this case, we need to add this link to our static uh, style sheet, right? And I think, yeah, we need the next config. So we need the next config JS. This is what we want. And uh, here we paste this bit. So we just install uh, CSS. I think that is it. So we don't need modules in this case, we don't need uh, scopes or anything like that. I don't think we're going to do anything magical with CSS. Right, I think that's basically all the setup we want. And um, da -da -da -da, heads, da -da -da -da, fetching data. So the thing is, I remember I had a problem at some point when with trying to actually include my uh, Bulma. So yeah, so basically, the way you include it is ridiculously stupid. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't suggest me the Bulma and CSS and Bulma min CSS is what we want, right? So yeah, you literally just import this file, right? So th there you go. This is our CSS. The thing is, I remember I had a problem with it with this of way of running because the document actually does not. I think there was like server side rendering issues or something like this. Let's, let's actually check. Uh, yes, cannot be reached. What is it broken? Um, chunk filter endpoint. What? What, what is happening? Uh, tabable plugin. Wait, did they break the plugins? Failed dev script is probably a problem. And likely output log it up off. So where, what? React and say, okay, this is the webpack tap webpack. What, what is that? Okay, now that doesn't work at all. Okay, what if I remove this import? Will that work? That breaks the code now right away. Yeah, okay, I'm guessing, I'm guessing they updated the Next.js but did not update the plugins yet. So, 
that's always fun. Um, let us roll back to next uh, six, whatever the previous release was, uh, because I don't want to suffer with broken plugins. That is never fun. Seven K. They had carry for so long. Why is it a thing? Okay, six one two. Six one two. All right, so I'm just gonna manually do this. RMRF node modules. I'm gonna remove package lock JSON and I'm gonna npm install this stuff and hope that it will work because it did work for me at least. Well, not the document thing, but we're gonna try to investigate it together and see if that was my error or maybe I just misunderstood something or maybe it just really doesn't work like this. Okay, um, come on. I thought I had um, Next.js 6 in my cache, but apparently not really. All right. I wonder if there's a ticket about it already. So there's a minor changes, major changes. Remove next error, upgrade Babel 7. There's no mentions of plugin breakage or anything. Um, that's, that's interesting. So CSS. Else load page, uh, blah, 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 import CSS selectors. Mm, doesn't really seem like it's breaking for anyone else. That's interesting. Okay, you know what? I don't want to waste my time figuring it out, but uh, that's something I feel like I will have to do anyway at some point. Or may maybe there's a ticket in the CSS repo site. Uh, wait, next CSS. This is what we want. Next plugins, uh, next CSS and next TypeScript. Next, yeah, there you go, five hours ago. So no CSS on, okay, that's a different problem. Um, three days ago, yeah. No, it doesn't seem like anyone, I, I mean like, okay, it's been out for an hour, so I don't think a lot of people tried it out yet. <laughs> you know what, we're just gonna roll with, um, with the old version that I know works for a fact. Yeah, yeah, I know that it's available, but it doesn't really work. There you go. So this one is compiling and working as expected. And now we should, uh, we actually have the styles, which is nice. Now, if only I remembered what was the problem. I think the problem was that when you change the pages, so we're gonna create other JS and uh, say here, other title, other subtitle, it removed this uh, CSS from the head because it basically replaces the whole page. Um, and let me try to put a link here. Now if only I remembered how to put links. So we're gonna say link. Uh, remember there's a link element. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is what we want. Okay, import link and link href. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna do this, paste it here. And it's gonna be pointing to other, other, uh, I apparently cannot type. That's a thing, there you go. Okay, so now if we go here, we click other and no, it still works. Okay, maybe there was a bug that was fixed. Okay, but um, yeah, well, that seems to be working fine. Oh, great, I mean, <laughs> not really complaining, you know, because we do have our styles here and they are compiled with uh, Bulma inside of them, right? No, wait, that's Bulma min CSS, that is not. No, I guess it is, right, because it uses the um, what do you call it? The oh God. source maps is what I wanted to say. There you go. Okay. So this works. So this is basically, yeah, this is all you need to do to use Bulma with React, literally, you know, you import it in your app somewhere, you include it into your styles, and then you just use the classes in the body of the, um, your program that that's that's literally it. So there's no other magic about it. So I'm going to delete the other page because we don't need it. And I guess let's make a first commit. Um, right, I forgot to completely need the repository. So we need to ignore a few things. Uh, right, I don't, I don't have git extensions here. So I need to touch Git ignore, ignore, I think, echo node modules slash into dot git ignore. Okay, uh, yes, echo dot next into git, eh, git ignore. Okay, um, I think we are good. 
API basic app. Uh, so basic Next.js app with Bulma. There you go. Um, right, I have to sign my commit. Okay, cool. Uh, so we did that. We have our basic app, we have the Bulma. So now we can actually close this proposal because it's basically done. Right, and now we need to do internationalization thing. Um, and to do that, I thought I would try to use the, I probably should not close the Next.js docs for now. So that was a nice library that we had a look at during, um, what do you call it, during BXJS Weekly, the podcast. And I had some colleagues try it out and uh, I've heard some really good things about it. So I thought, let's try it out as well. So, you know, I didn't really work with it yet, but uh, since I already had positive feedback, why not? Um, I can tell you that in a previous project, I used React Intel, I think it was called. Yes, exactly, Yahoo library. It's quite nice, but it is pretty heavy and, uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's some, well, there was some minor things that were a bit annoying with it, but uh, the primary problem, I guess, was that it, w it was quite large, but we were building like the large enterprise um, in-house portals that would be in an internet, so nobody cared much about the sizes, you know. So let's try going with Lingui because it just seems to be much nicer and just five kilobytes. So uh, yeah, we can go with that. So, so how do you get started with it? Let's see, example with React. This is exactly what we want. So we want at Lingui React. Is that all we have to install? They have a get started guide. React tutorials, start, yes. So we got this, we got, yeah, we got the app. It's okay, install Lingui. Get start with uh, three major packages. CLI, uh, CLI for managing internalization workflow and management of the message. Oh, they even have a command line for that. That's really neat. Okay, React components, and we got the macros for easier writing messages in ICU message format. Uh, VSL is the Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, and this is basically, whoops, this is basically an Ubuntu. So this is, uh, as you can see here, this is an, Ubuntu with a special uh, Microsoft kernel that runs on top of Windows in the same way that you would run Vine apps in uh, Linux. And it works amazingly well. I have like my Git, my Node and everything else in there and you know, it just works. Okay, uh, let me continue reading this. So we got the mic. Uh, so yes, I work primarily with the ICU message format. This is why I was saying that I never worked with the CLDR thing. Although I know that this is like a major system for super complex um, localizations and internalizations. But honestly, cannot tell you anything about it because I've only read about it a bit. So yeah, you know, you would have to ask someone else to talk about that. Okay. Um, I guess we can, uh, comes in with a handy init command, install all required packages automatically. Okay, we can use npx, right? So we can do this, we can copy this, and we can say npx and init dry run. So let's try it out. Let's see what it actually does and what will this add. Um, whoops, that is, Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I can fold it. We don't really need to see the files right now. Yes, exactly. It is Windows subsystem for Linux and it is, I mean, hands down, it's, it's really great. This is like one of the best things Microsoft did to Windows in a long time for developers, in my opinion. Okay, come on. So once we are done with this, uh, you can do a dry run and you need and then we need to add the React and uh, Babel plugin macro. I don't know, do we want macros? I guess, do we just open a second terminal while this one is running? I'm gonna go into the SL again. And this is gonna be npm at uh, link react. So just to, um, can I, can I split them? Yes, I can, cool. What, no, ah, fuck, come on, really? Oh yeah, okay, uh, right, okay, this is installed so I can kill it. You want to install, no, no I don't want to install that. Um, I don't want to configure macros thing. 
Uh, that's all it does. It just installs the packages. Okay, I guess we don't really need command line then. I can install under the hood. Micro, uh, right. Okay, so it literally just installs the pack. Yeah, okay, that's not. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna do it manually. I'm okay with running it myself. Right. Um. Okay, so we got this provider thing, and I guess let's start with one basic basic test and just do it in our page. Theoretically, you would want this provider to be wrapped around everything, right? We got the English and introducing internationalization. So we got this trans thing components, okay. And uh, I guess we could just do this and be like, okay, copy this title. Trans message. So yeah, we don't from macro. Oh, okay. So you, you, so it does require essentially the Babel step. Ugh, that's a bit annoying, but okay. You know what? If that's going to save me future, uh, future pain and ass, then why not? Let's do this. Okay, so we need the custom Babel config. Babel. Customizing Babel config. This is what we need. So here's an example of Babel RC. Okay, cool. Um, now we need the files. New file, Babel RC. There you go. So this is the default config, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't care about this stuff. So we basically just want to add whatever they want to have in there. Presets and react. Okay, so it's just the macros plugin. And that's literally it. So this should do the trick, right? All right. And then we got this trans thing and hello name, whatever that means. Let's start with the basic the message and just some text. All we need is right the trans macro. Okay. So right, let's see. So we did that, right? So in theory, if we do npm run dev and start it, we should at least see it working, I guess. Okay, at least it's compiled. That's a good sign. Message inbox. Uh, well, I did I leave it? Yeah, I leave it uh, as a message inbox. Okay. So now how do we get about translating that? So I guess I should make the docs a bit larger so you guys can also see that. Okay, uh, hello name, yes. Uh, that's how you go about it. Okay, so you got this ID and then you get the values and I imagine this values will be templated, right? So we got this, hello uh, name, right? And name is gonna be yeah, let's just set its name be very original and put a name bxjs. In theory, yeah, okay, so this works. So this is one language. Now lingui okay, so the command line can also do extraction of languages, which is quite important. So let's try np npx lingui extract. Let's see how that looks. Like if it can do the whole vocabulary creation for us, that would be quite amazing. I should probably just install it globally because this is taking too long. Like MPX is supposed to use the cache. What are you doing in there? Okay, uh, advoc L N C S. You run extract again. And then you get the locale messages. Oh, that is interesting. Okay, I imagine you could also do all of that. You know what? Screw you. I'm just gonna install you globally because this is literally taking too much time. Okay. I should have probably done this in the first place. We don't need that. What? Missing right access. Uh, oh God, no. Oh God, no, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna install you locally. No, no, I don't wanna install you locally. Let's, wait a second. Does it using my Linux node right now? I don't remember. Yeah, I have 1010 here, okay. So npm, I guess, yeah, sudo, no, that's that's not good. Um, I mean, we can just do this, right? 
Uh, right, it should be sudo. Of course, I don't know why I did not change my permissions earlier, but there we go. npm install minus g ling weekly. This should work now. Come on. Okay, and after that, we want to run lingui extract, right? I get, oh, yeah, right. I'm an idiot. I'm guessing it takes so long because I'm running it inside of the Windows uh, Linux subsystem, right? Because it basically translates all the hard drive calls and everything. Oh, God. Uh, I should have used the. I probably should have used the uh, node from the Windows side. That would be like twice as fast because it is running on SSD, so it shouldn't take that much. Okay. I mean, virtualization always has its sort of limitations, but fine. You know what? It's okay. What? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, screw you. Okay. Okay. NPM exe. No, it's not. Wait. Node exe is a command, right? Yes. Node exe is there. Now that is okay. I'm going to create another terminal npm install minus G and we're going to install lingui CLI. So I'm just going to install it on the Windows side. I have nodes in, in both, uh, both systems, I guess. And yeah, okay. That seems to be way faster. <laughs> um, okay. Lingui extract is what we want to run. Can I find module Babel core? Um, sorry, what? Why are you? Does it need it globally as well? Wait a second. Um, npm. Yeah, no. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. npm depth zero minus g uh, ls. Hey, Baka, oh, welcome to the stream. Uh, we are having some problems here. So we got Babel is lint, Babel unmet per ah, pff, pure dependencies. God damn it. Come on. PM minus G install. Why don't you never mention your peer? Like, <laughs> seriously. Come on, documentation. You could be better. Yeah, there should have been a mention of global peer dependency in here, but you know what? Okay, fine. Lingui um, extract is what we want to run. Okay, there we go. Uh, no locales defined. Cool. I think that's expected, right? So this is exactly what we should have seen. Yes. Okay. So now we have to add locales. So let's say lingui add locale. Is it just add locale? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go English, Russian, and German. Because at least I know those languages somehow. And I'm going to run extract and it breaks. Now what? Plugin zero specified in provided an invalid default. What? That doesn't seem to be working quite well. Does it not like my node 10? Does it want like node eight or something? Oh no, come on, Lingui. Why are you doing this to me? Why would you do this to me? <laughs> Is there a ticket about that? getting error when using uh, I guess they have like a command line repository or is it mono repo uh, code modes lingui editor yeah it seems to be a mono repo I guess uh, loader oh god cannot find module baby baby core what man that's not a thing babel core <laughs> okay feature feature suggestion so wait what is it says that Plugin zero specified in provided. Does, do you not like my Babel config now? Why, why are you even trying to read that? Okay, so it doesn't like the Next.js. Okay, maybe it doesn't work with Next.js. Okay, you know what? JS Lingui Next.js. I mean, here's a good question. Do they, do they have any interop? Great example on other repos. Uh, if the yeah, example doesn't work. Okay, 
Hmm. Yeah, I want literally Next.js and I want literally JS Lingui. Thank you very much. Uh, create examples on other repos. Yes, let's see. Upgrade Gatsby, manual install DOM. Okay, so this is the Gatsby example. So they have a next example here. Not really. Well, that's a bit of annoying. Closing this one in favor of this one. Okay. Uh, set up. Okay, one, two, three, four. This is all Gatsby, right? Yeah, okay. Ah, <laughs> come on, please don't tell me it's not going to be friends with Next.js setup. That's going to be not very nice. Oh, God. Um, here's the question, though. If I go into the pages and uh, just say lingui extract here would that work okay but it has so it created some files right where there locale okay so if we move this locale thing over here and then run extract would that work uh now what no such file. Oh, I guess. Okay. Um, I guess that does not work. So we're going to remove locale and redo that. Where? RM locale. You don't like RF? Uh, yes to all. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let's try that again. So we're going to do lingui. Lingui. Add locale. So we add locales, right? And then we're going to do extract. You need package JSON for reals. No such file package JSON. Okay, so why do you want package JSON? What are you trying to read from there? That feels so weird. And it still sketches the Babel config from the higher level and just stops working. Oh <laughs> no, why? Okay, um, well, I have like, I know one option, wait a second, I'm really curious if that will work. If that will work, it's gonna be stupid as hell. So, I'm just gonna do this. And then I'm just gonna be like, extract, will you work? Can I find preset env, okay. okay. What if I remove presets and be like, there you go, no presets, just, just plugin. No, you're br you're still br what? Oh, because it now oh, right. Okay, so it basically tries to. I guess it uses Babel to parse the code that we have. Oh, so we need uh, npm install. Uh, no, I guess we should do that in our VSL shell. npm install save dev um, Babel presets and and I guess Babel preset react is something where you should have here, right? Because this is Babel loader. Hmm, it's not there, really. Okay, that's interesting. No, it should be there, right? Babel. Ah, yeah, there you go. Preset and preset react. Okay, so I guess uh, they, uh, I guess this wasn't even needed because RM. So we can use Babel uh, presets and whoops and babel presets react right so this should work um right now we go to our second shell and we try to run lingui extract nope uh babel 7 oh okay so those are new oh come on amy why does it have to be so hard okay npm install babel preset react okay let's use the old versions because why not we're gonna have 25 different presets oh god okay uh, and then it's gonna be env and react and now i wish there was a way to conditionally load um different things so extract now you will work Nope, it still doesn't work. God. How? What? 
How do you not understand spread? Wait, wait a second. It's literally not even a Babel feature anymore. Why? Do we have to specify the thing for end preset? Uh, okay, where's the start of the thing? Bars Babel 7, what? No, this is the old thing. Okay, let me clear this first. And then let's try to run it again and see what is wrong this time around. That is not fun. Okay, there we go. Code generator has de-optimized the styling. Uh, yeah, whatever. That doesn't matter. Um, unexpected token. What the? Right. Um, that is. Why do you have to be like this? <laughs> Why do you even have to be like this? Babel Core 6. Uh, yeah, Babel Core 7 Bridge. Okay. Now here's the thing. Here's the question. Can we just do it manually without the tool, right? So it generates some locale files and I imagine it's going to generate like dictionary or something. Uh, because this is not working out. Vanilla JS, Webpack React. Okay, presets, Babel, yes. Webpack config, do they specify anything special to the end preset maybe? No, it doesn't seem so. So we are running in node 10 on both ends. Why don't you like it? Okay, so you get the locale, you get messages po. Yeah, this has to be relatively simple. But then you also need the build command, right? So because you do this extract command, then you have the compile command, and then you get the messages JS file that you then uh, import, basically. Oh God, why does it have to be like this? I had to do my stream when the, you know what? I'm gonna just uh, save dev uh, lingui. Maybe, maybe the problem is that I'm trying to run it from the different version of node. Maybe this is what it doesn't like. So far, you know, that should not be a major problem. Let's try. So I'm going to install it as a dev dependency and I'm going to run it from this repo. And okay, so we got those locales. We got the messages JSON. They are empty, which is expected, right? But basically, once we run extract, it should get those messages from our index.js. I don't even try to read the document. Like, why do you not understand? I don't, I just don't get it how it doesn't understand the spread syntax. It's been like in V8 for ages now. And I don't think it's like, it's not even, does not even need to rely on Babel anymore. Okay. And not modules bin lingui extract. No, no. Plugin preset files are not allowed to export objects only functions. What are you even talking about? Feel like all of this is happening because of the version mismatch, but I have no idea. So um, basically the next JS is using a newer Babel versions than the Lingui and this is just basically screws everything up. Oh my God, okay. You know what we're going to try? We're going to try to, I guess, remove all of this stuff. MPMRM. Here's the question. So if I, if I remove all of that, we leave just the Babel macro and we install the um, next seven, which uses the latest Babel, I think. Uh, no, I shouldn't have changed it before that. So here's the question. If I use the Babel 7, no, uh, sorry, Next.js 7, will that actually help it? So ref node modules, npm install. Uh, I should probably kill the package JSON too. Pack, 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 no, package lock. There we go. npm install. All right, that's half an hour fighting with dependencies. That's, that's what you get. Yeah, that's programming in a nutshell uh no okay um it's kind of weird that they don't give you a way to do this sort of early 
testing, excluding build files, core API command line configuration. So there is a link VRC, compile namespace, closure JS, ES syntax. Okay, so there's some configuration, but holy crap, why is it so? Hmm. All right. Okay, let, let's see if, if using the latest versions of everything works. Maybe it was my mistake to try and use the old Next.js because the um, plugin works. Just curious. Come on. Again, I should have probably used the Windows side Node.js to make it faster, but uh, too late, it's almost done. I guess, the, yeah, I think the basically the what takes the longest is copying files from one file system to another because it's literally different file system types. Okay, uh, clear. So npm run dev, let's see if that works. Nope, so we have, oh, right, because I'm an idiot and I should not do this, right? We need our next Babel preset, right? So, um, yes, that work. Yep, still a problem. Uh, what do you not like? Chunk entry points. Uh, okay, I get, yeah, I guess basically. So let me let me guess. If I disable the CSS plugin, then we'll start working, right? No, it just fails. Cannot find module document. What? because of the CSS import here. Okay, restart that. It seems like the, why don't you want to write your own internalization? I mean, you could of course write your own, but that is generally a terrible idea. Like there's so many existing tools and some of them work okay. So now here's the question. If we go and if we run uh, node modules bin lingui, uh, what, no, lingui extract, like writing your own tools should be the last resort, right? It should be the last thing you even think about. Okay, so now it seems so, yeah, seems like the problem was exactly the Babel versions and the Next.js pulled in the older Babel and the lingui required the newer one, so it wasn't working. So now we actually have the stuff extracted and uh, we can translate it. Uh, so I guess we can just say this, whoops. Yeah, yeah, no, this looks fine, right? Oh, it just reformats it, okay. So let's just say it, hello, let's just call it hello name, um, yes. And this is gonna be, yes, this is a very hardcore localization here going on. <laughs> Um, is that how you do it? Do you change defaults or what? Um, here's the question. Da, 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 da. Tutorial. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we got this. We did this. We did this. Message inbox. Uh, this is not how the file looks. This tutorial seems to be slightly outdated. Okay, but you know what? Let's try anyway. So we now say lingui compile, right? Compile. And we now get messages. Okay, so and uh, how do I locale C? Yeah, but that means I have to require. Oh, okay. I guess you basically do server side rendering, and depending on the language you pick, the required file, and then you change it, right? So we had our interest. So we yeah, we have to move this provider essentially into our document. I guess that would make sense. And uh, you know what we can do? We can be like, screw your stuff. We're just gonna just gonna take Bulma from the CDN because 
uh, obviously there's like the plugin is now broken so it's not gonna work we're just gonna take this and be like hey you can start with one css file and just um take it from uh content delivery network there you go done Bulma works again <laughs> and we can actually kill it from our dependencies which is also okay there you go okay um so we did that we did that we moved the file so we killed it from here so we need to take this and put it into our document right so i guess we can just wrap our main stuff with it okay uh kill it from here and yeah so in theory all right we need to provide uh so yeah we don't need this next config anymore we okay kill the messages for now and now locale and and uh, there was something that you provide catalogs okay so there you go oh okay so you literally require a bunch of catalogs okay um i wish there was so they they would generate i mean now we can probably do it ourselves add the logs right but i think that should have been generated uh, automatically so import de from de messages so basically you just import three catalogs right and and ru and then you just export uh i guess yeah we can export default d n and ru so this is our catalogs Okay, I get maybe we can just recommend and say export from yeah, that should work. This syntax is already supported in Babel as far as I remember. Which means we can say import uh from uh there's gonna be two levels, locale catalogs, we're gonna say uh n ru and de. And this means we're gonna say n ru and d here. And theoretically, if I did not screw anything up, this should work, right? Did I screw something up? Well, this it compiles. That's always a good sign. So let's see. Internal server, hey. Okay, so I did screw something up. No, cannot find module document. Okay, so there is some error with the documents. Um, I am guessing this is not yet working. So import, export de. I guess, yeah, we can just do this, right? D -N -N -R -U. And then here, basically, which means we can just say locales and just say, yeah let's just call it catalogs because this would make sense right so this is what they say uh, restart that please recompile it properly and tell me that it works nope that does not work what do you not like again uh it, oh i forgot to copy the provider okay that is not very smart but let us where is it there it is okay we need this thing Ah, we need the provider, right? There we go. And uh, uh, so this recompiled. There you go. Hello, name. I am what? So why do you not render it now? We got the name. We got. Um, you need the message to match it. No. Now that's interesting. <laughs> okay, so what happened? Is there additional steps I need to take? To get the provider, we give the catalogs. Um, no, we literally didn't do anything. Oh, oh, you need to remove the message. So it just have to be this trans, uh, trans tag, right? So this now, no, still doesn't work. ID, hello name. So here's the question. Um, language data, plurals, oh, okay. Is that because I did this? Is this what it wants? Is that how you fill it out properly? So first of all, we take this out and we say, uh, this is what English yes, hello name. Is this what it wants? So I just typed it in the wrong way. 
So if I mess up with defaults, it's essentially going to be like, eh, you broke everything. Okay, we need to run Lingui compile again. And now we can run dev and I think I finally make it work. Okay. Nope, that still doesn't work. Yeah, that's interesting. Origins, pages index 12. It's not really 12 anymore. Do I have to extract it again? That is all very confusing. Okay. All count. Yeah, okay. So you have them. You have translation. Okay, so it just literally dropped the other lines. All right. Compile. Now let's try to figure out why the hell does it not works anymore. Okay, um, here's the question. Can it be that this is because we're using this provider in the uh, in here in the document? Can it be that it doesn't work for some reason? So let's try let's try using it here. Maybe I'm gonna comment this command this. Like you never know with Next.js, it sometimes has this very strange server-side rendering things that you know just quirks basically that are not apparent on the first go. I'm gonna paste you here. Okay, yeah. So it was the quirk from the Next.js and the server-side rendering in the catalog, uh, basically. So you need to provide it in either in your app or in some wrapper or whatever, right? Okay, so let's try adjusting it to like Russian. Hey, it actually works. That's that's pretty great. Cool. Okay, so we we did that. That took way longer than I expected it to be. So this is instantialization essentially. We need like localization for dates and prices and pluralization. Let's check out how this works with the Lingui. I mean, so far, you know, aside from the problem we had with the Babel version, which is annoying as hell, to be honest. This tool is pretty nice. It basically does a lot of things for you. Okay. Um, trans, see a link. Okay, so you can literally have the whole bits of HTML inside of the, or like React, I guess, inside of the trans component. And hey, that's really cool. See you all in red messages, mark them in red. Spooky, right? Let's see, uh, run extract. Uh huh. That's it. So it has it basically when it parses your text, it recognizes that there might be like plural things. So let's try this. Yeah, that sounds like a interesting thing. Okay, the random is. Uh, yeah, you're probably gonna it's probably gonna throw because we don't really have that. So this now is gonna extract. Okay, yeah, number zero. Read more. And this also works. Okay, that's interesting. Name in French. Yeah, okay, so this in the message inbox title. Okay, so basically whatever you have inside is a fallback for the cases when the translation is not found, I'm guessing. Plurals, yes. There's there are messages in your inbox. So English plural rules. One other. Oh, they have a plural component. That's quite easy. Okay. <laughs> okay, I mean that's that's pretty neat. So where which which package does it come from? Plural, it is macro as well. Okay, so we don't actually need this, right? So it's, it's literally just the component, which is really neat. We don't really need that. We can just use the component. Uh, yes, you do store all of the locales in the memory. In our case, like normally what you would do in production app is that Instead of loading all three catalogs, you would uh, take the browser locales and just load the one uh, that the user has because you don't care about the others, right? 
So uh, we could probably do that actually. I mean, that's a good idea. It wasn't a proposal as well. So we can do language detection by browser. Um, browser locale, uh, there's a package for it, but I think it was just like um, MDN locale. There's literally like a variable for it. Uh, localization visualization, and uh, introduction guides and tutorials. Why can't I click them? Why is none of this clickable? Reference, Unicode bidirection text algorithm. No, that is not guides and tutorial. No, that's literally not clickable. Okay. Um, browser, wait, was it? Browser user locale. There you go. Um, there was accept language, right? This is what I was looking for. Navigator language thing. Okay. So we actually need to rewrite this a bit. Class uh, index extends. Hey, uh, what am I writing? React component. So our render methods, and we're gonna return this stuff. Um, we're gonna do this. So one, two, so this should work. And now we need the, basically we need to take, get the locale and dynamically uh, require only the stuff that we want, right? So first of all, okay, we will continue with plurals afterwards. Uh, get initial props, where's my example? Thank you very much. Okay, uh, regular headers, user agent. So we are in this case interested in uh, navigator accept language, right? I think it is the same header like accept language here. Whoops. Um, user languages, let's just call it this way. I think that should work. So let's just try to print it out and see what exactly happens. Okay, so stringify this props uh, user language languages, right? Okay, uh, right, I stopped it. So run dev. I think that should work. Did I, I, I did not remove this second trans, so we should kill that. And what? But I just removed it. What are you talking about? It's not there anymore. Come on. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we have my list of languages. So you can see the English is the first one. Then we have the Russian and we have the German uh, and they even have weights, which is nice. Okay. Um, how do you properly process that? Uh, I guess, is that what this browser language package does? Here's the question, what does it do? Uh, use language, okay, is it literally just an alias for that? Nah, nah, we're okay. Script tag, browser language, we have to choose, get lang, languages from zero, yeah, 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 but we also need the server side basic thing, so we cannot do that. Here. And I want to parse it myself. Oh, come on. Why do you do this to me? Okay. Um, so let me think. So what we do, we take this. Uh, no, content language is what you send back, right? There is no request header content language, I think. This is all the headers that we send for request. We got accept language, and this is exactly my languages. This is what I want to see. There is no content language is the, uh, I don't even send it back, but this is basically content language is what the server says, what the content language is, right? So it's not a request header. Okay, so I'm just thinking, how can I parse this? Um, let me think. So we take this and on user languages string, let's call it this way, user languages, uh, languages, uh, user languages string, we're gonna split it by colon. So which means it's gonna be an array now, right? Right, okay, and now it has either the, so we are interested in this bit and it seems to be after a comma every time. 
So we take this array and we map it. We get language. We map it into um oh, I don't even know. I mean, you know what? Let's just let's just do a very simple thing. Lang. We split it by comma and we pop the last element, right? So theoretically. There you go. And we don't really need this thing here. So I guess we filter out filter languages that language includes. So we filter everything that includes. There you go. So now we have a nice list of languages and they are already sorted by the weight. So we can just take the first one. Which means that in this case, we can just say user, um, no wait, this props user language, blah, blah, user languages from zero, right? This is literally all we want to say. Um, I guess we could say, okay, you know what? Let's just make it slightly nicer. Current language. Ta 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 ta. We take this, we take this, and we say current language. And here we will just say uh, current language. Uh, current language. Okay, there you go. So now, how the hell do I change it? Actually, <laughs> all right. You know what? We I mean, we can we can like this is the working thing, but. Uh, just to screw with it, we can just say, okay, D, D, E, right? Because this will just disregard the first one and now it works. Okay, so we don't need the here subtitle. Um, we were, so we configured this language detection now and it actually works for now. We're just overriding it for the sake of testing. All right, so we have pluralization and localization left. Let's try to figure this thing out. Um, okay, so we got the plural plural um, thingy. So I guess we can say h2 here. Why not plural messages counts and let's try to play around with it. Let's just put it to one. And plural comes from uh, macro, right? Plural, there you go. Okay. I imagine this will not work, right? So it's, no, it does work. Okay. There's one message in your inbox. And I guess if we change to two, it should, there are, yeah, okay. So th that is super easy. So how does it work with other languages? Uh, okay, and if you extract, okay, that's the interesting bit. Um, yes, I forget, I, like <laughs> when I'm streaming, I totally forget to do sensible things that you would normally do, but this is a good point and I should probably commit at least right now. Okay, let's see. Um, git rm next config js. Git add package. So we are gonna add package JSON package. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna commit the whole thing right now because I screwed up anyway. Git add babelrc locale tem setup basic lingui. That up. Okay. This is totally my fault. And I like normally when I work, you know, I have way more, way more time to think. So I tend to do like smaller commits, but for whatever reason, when I stream, I just can't make myself do proper atomic commits. I guess it's just too much to think about. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just you guys are stressing me so much. I just can't. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the um, to the thing. Okay, NPM. Yeah. Um, we needed to run lingui extract, right? Um, there you go. So we now should get those new messages. That is plural. Okay, so it says message counts. This is our variable plural, one and other. Okay, so this uses this ICU format, which is pretty nice and I'm basically to translate it I think we just need to do this uh, this is what Russian um, now if I remember here's the question do I properly remember Russian that's a really good question um, 
or wrap is what I want to disable. Okay, messages plural one. Uh -huh. Um, hold on, how do I translate that properly? No, this is not. So this is, no. Yeah, okay, this is what I want. <laughs> okay. Oh God, this is too hard. I never did like any, you know, hardcore app translation myself. So translating the messages actually is, oh my God, this is, um okay mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah russian from this regard is a bit easier i think now english is just uh no this is not what we want this is literally like just what we have right now right and now we have german and hell if i know how to write this in german that is probably the hardest part uh oh god you know what I'm gonna cheat. Gonna gonna go to uh yeah, post time no that is not a thing. Okay, that is <laughs> I even I know that this translation is not quite cutting it, but you know what? Let's just escape and actually design them in box. Let's just call it inbox because Okay, as uh yeah, then the plural would be just different ending, I think. And then, yeah, I think that is correct. But you know, if you know German and if you think that I screwed up, please do let me know. I am still learning it. Um, all right, so theoretically, all right, I, I'm not, oh, right. We need to do compile first, compile. And uh, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to start. Yes, I will scroll up until I will find the needed command instead of just typing it. That's how I work. One of my colleagues gave me a 30 commit merge with merge conflict and no tests. I asked him why he would do that and he was, it was easier for him. Of course it's easier for him. <laughs> that sounds like an easy thing to do, you know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've like, in this case, I kind of have a luxury of committing whenever I want, because I'm working alone on this thing. And I know that even if I commit a huge chunk of code, it won't actually break anything, right? Because there's no other people working on this project. So it's going to be fine. If I would work with someone and if I would work with, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, I cannot actually, what? Wait, what? Why is there no way? Wait a second. One other. That is actually not correct as well, but whatever, you know what? Why is it not working? Where's my message? Now that is, so it did work correctly in German, right? Um. German. That works. Okay, English. That also works. Why is it not working in Russian? It's just empty. Okay, let's have a look at this code. Um, you know what? I'm gonna format this with. Uh, uh, there you go. Okay, plurals. One, many, few. Hello. Okay. Other. Does it screw up? I mean, it is a Unicode, but that's, that's, I mean, the one works, right? So this is the thing. So if I have one message, this works fine. I said breaks on two messages. This is so weird. See? So weird. Stand. What is going on? Okay, you know what? Let's try and compile again. Maybe just something went wrong. Nope, literally broken. Here's the question. What if I uh, inbox has messages? Just, just really curious if I change to English, does it not play nice with the Unicode? <laughs> because that would be ridiculous. 
Or am I? Is it like as usual? I'm streaming something and then I caught some obscure bug that nobody else has. That happened. No, okay. So this is not a problem of the message. Mm. Why does this happen? Okay, here's the question. If I do extract now, maybe something else broke? Okay. Now we do compile. Maybe that will help. This is the weirdest error ever. Like literally every other language works fine, but this doesn't. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, Lingui is way, way, way smaller plus it has this nice auto extraction of the languages like React, um, React Intel is, uh, I think you mean, do you mean React Intel or is there a different library? React, is there like React i18n? Is that, no, this is React Intel. Oh, oh, okay, there's a different library here. Uh, using it in, so this seems to be title, name, your messages, okay, we ought to say. Example with React and render props, why not? Let's have a look. Older structure, npm eject. Okay, is there like a super Next.js example? There we go, that's what I wanna see, but, oh, okay, they moved it to Next.js repo, okay. So, okay, languages, options, use browser. Okay, so they, they seem to be, uh, maybe we should have used this library, but I don't know. I just wanted to try Lingui because we had some guys using it and we were saying it's quite nice. Okay, preloads. That also seems to be very nice and seems to be, seems to have baked in server-side rendering support, which is really cool. Where have you been in the beginning of the stream, man? <laughs> But you know, maybe maybe we'll just do another stream with this one because it looks quite nice actually. I have not seen that. Okay, um, but let us. You know what? I'm not gonna spend time on that bug because screw that. So we need to have a look at the dates localization. Um, date format. There you go. So we have a date formatting. Uh, I guess it's also a macro, right? I was on my way my my car to catch up. Oh no! Oh no! You should have driven uh, terribly dangerously to get there earlier, you know? Don't do that, don't listen to me. That's the most terrible advice you can get. <laughs> Drive safe. Okay, um, so date formatting, how does this work? Uh, yeah, 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 I just, just include, oh, now, right, okay, because I don't have dates now, right? We just do this. Okay. Uh, so I guess you, it literally just works, right? So it basically just takes the, so now we should get the German one, right? And the Russian one is not that different from German one. Not, yeah, it literally just works. This is kind of amazing when you think about it. Okay, so if we remove that and we just save it and there you go, okay. Cool, that's the, like, this stuff just literally works. I drive like an old person very slowly. That's how I used to drive as well in Russia. And I still hate driving because of the Russian traffic. Essentially, it was hell on earth. Like I, I don't know how I survived all of that. It was just insane. Okay. Um, I think that basically covers all of it. Prices. Do they have anything for prices? I closed it a bit too, um, too early. Let's see. We got documentation and uh, pr price anything for prices no there is nothing that is macros um oh so they even have those arbitrary macros that you can use to do whatever the hell you want that is quite nice okay um they gotta have a price example somewhere plural date number select but i mean i guess 
yeah, I guess it would just be normal, like a normal string, right? So you don't really just, it's just a matter of putting the price symbol, currency symbol and whatever. Dynamically loading our translation. That sounds interesting. Oh, they have a Babel plugin for that. Okay. So you can do it. Okay. I mean, that actually seems like a very nice tool. Exploiting a few problems we've encountered while trying to use it with Next.js and older versions of Babel. It's actually has a really cool tool set and it even supports TypeScript, which is also great. All right. You know what? <laughs> That's been too much suffering on my part. So we're going to wrap it up here, I guess. Let me just um, commit whatever I've committed here. Um, let me see. We got the messages. We got the compiled stuff. Yeah, because why not? Git uh, git commit. Uh, what do we got? Plural exam plural and uh, date examples. Right. That's basically it. Uh, Yep. Okay. Uh, we should probably create the repo on GitHub and push it. Meanwhile, guys, if you have any questions, any suggestions, anything that you think I might have missed or you want me to explain right now, feel free to send them uh, now in the chat. I will be more than happy to uh, do any of that. Simple uh, React app that uses bulma for styling and js lingui for trans uh, for i 18 and you know what i'm not gonna write the whole thing i'm too lazy for that <laughs> all right i also need a readme file Ugh. okay uh, let me just steal the readme file from other projects as i usually do and uh, we should be good um, Right, edit, that is always nice. Come on, okay, so we don't need that anymore. We don't need that anymore. Read me MD. And we don't really need, no, we don't need terminal because we need to do push. So, um, simple React app built with Bulma and JS React app with multiple localizations is what i want to say simple react app with multiple localization um set up clone the repo run npm install run npm run dev for developments and run npm run builds and npm run uh no npm start for production right uh so i guess we could just say simple react app that demonstrates demonstrates how to use ulma with react for styling and how to use js Lingui to localize uh, your text. Done. Okay. Git add readme. Add readme file. Um, da -da 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 -da. Right, now we just need to push that uh, over here, right? And we are. Uh, Right click to no. I'm not a fan of right clicking to paste things, but this is how Windows works apparently. Yes, please push that. There we go. Cool. We are basically done. I should probably close those proposals. Um, wherever they are, they are over here. So we got a uh, sort of by thumbs up and we got this one and this one done in here and command and close and I'll post the video once it's uploaded on YouTube. And that's basically it. Okay, it doesn't seem like anyone has any questions or any suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the stream, enjoyed my suffering and all that kind of stuff. Jesting seems to be quite nice when you don't encounter any of those 
Volux issues with compatibility and it has a really nice tool set. So, you know, do check it out. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And as usual, I see you on the podcast on Saturday and maybe on some games on other days. Yeah, thank you for watching and bye.